Hey, what's happening? Customer experience community. This is Dominic. Welcome to another video. Customer experience consultant, Xandas consultant, decade of experience. Thought I'd do a different one today from a botanical garden. Today's going to be three ways to connect your forms to Xandas. First one is going to be using an email. So as most of you use uh, email forms, you have your customer filling in the form and then you receive an email in your inbox and then, you know, that's it. You process it from there. Now what you can do is you can forward one of these uh, emails or this email automatically to forward into Zendesk to a Zendesk email. Now, this is pretty standard, if you will. So most people do it like this because it's the most cost effective. It's not the best experience because all the information that the customer fills in into their form, which is on your website or wherever, you know, it ends up as a ticket and it's in the body of that email. You can see all this information and you can leverage it from there. Meaning you can create triggers to actually look for bits of text in the body of the email. So you say, for example, if a ticket is created and the body of the email text contains a type of request onboarding or a billing issue or whatever issue, then, you know, send a notification. However, you obviously have to create variations each time a ticket is created and for all the different types of requests or locations or whatever fields you have in your form. And it can get really, really, really hectic and messy. So I don't necessarily think it's uh, the most uh, productive way to do it, but it is one of the ways. Second way to create tickets in Zendesk via form is to use Zendesk forms, which is a feature in the Zendesk guide. So the Zendesk guide is where you keep your frequently asked questions or questions and answers. You have your knowledge base and you also have a form. Now that form is great because it's uh, easily customizable. You can add fields, you can add forms for different types of requests. You can uh, remove or add fields. You can add conditional fields to say show more fields or less fields if I choose something in the form. It's really practical and you can create business rules directly based on these ticket fields that the customer fills in in this uh, form. Now, this form lives on Zendesk, so it's uh, part of the Zendesk, let's say, sphere. Even in the URL, you would see it contains Zendesk, but you can customize the URL to match your company's branding to be help.yourcompany.com slash forms or whatever. And uh, yeah, that can feed into Zendesk and can create business rules based on what the customer chooses in the dropdown, for example. And it's much easier to see in reports as well because you can you know, very easily go at the end of the month to see, okay, let's see how many form tickets have been created and uh, how many you know type of requests have been chosen for, I don't know, billing or for bugs or for technical or for general inquiries, etc. The third option, which I think is quite smart, is using the API. So use the Zendesk API to create a ticket inside Zendesk each time somebody uses the form. How this works is on your website or wherever you keep your form, Google form, whichever it is, you create a custom, let's say mini app or a mini script, which what it does is it authenticates to your Zendesk as an administrator or, or as an agent, because you don't want people sending in random requests on your behalf. So what this means is you uh, authenticate with Zendesk and you allow them to create a ticket from your website or or your whatever you keep your form. So what you do is you match the fields in your form, you match them to ticket fields in Zendesk. So meaning if you have type of request in your form, you have to have type of request in your Zendesk as well. And there's an ID there and you mix and match that with your form fields on your website or wherever you keep it. Now, this is a great one too because it's smart and you can keep everything on your website and uh, you create tickets in Zendesk and you have reports on those uh, tickets and it's uh, very, good. My personal favorite and most cost effective is number two because using ticket forms is very practical, especially for reports and business rules. So yeah, that's the update for today. I hope you like this. May I remind you that only 7% of you are subscribed. 93% of you are watching these videos and not subscribing. So guys, please consider subscribing. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you. Bye.